I've wanted to do something similar to the random pattern that's often used on cutting boards. I really like the idea of being able to cut something up sort of simply and getting a very complex pattern out of that. And I thought it would be neat to make that kind of a pattern for a sphere. I started by thinking I would make a prototype to study how the pattern worked and how to make that wrap around a sphere. In the end, that prototype sort of became a project in itself. <laughs> I used a bunch of the scrap pieces of the pine I've been using a lot lately, and I cut those into a whole series of pieces that were exactly the same length. And I could lay those out and make the, the first pass on trying to make a random pattern. So I glued all of those pieces together, in this first pass, I was gluing them in pairs and then gluing the pairs together. In later glue-ups, I didn't do it this way. I, I just glued each piece together. I glued them up in sections. As they had dried, they didn't quite fit perfectly flat to each other, so I trimmed up the ends on the sections I had started. Then glued those sections together into one long piece. As the side was actually side grain, I could run it through the jointer and get a nice straight edge. And this allowed me to cut the other edge on the table saw. So in doing the sphere, I was going to make this pattern into a 20-sided object made from equilateral triangles. And I wanted to have the random pattern start to camouflage the triangles a little bit. When I was making the globe a month or two ago, one of the comments about that was maybe the pieces that I used for the oceans and the land should have been triangles so that they sort of worked with the pattern of the triangles that made up the sphere a little better. So that's what I was going for here, was to make the random pattern of wood pieces have a 30-60 angle so that the 60 degree angles on the triangle would, would sort of not so much disappear, but sort of work with that pattern. So this is the first glue up at an angle. And I can then rejoint the edge again. Now the edge is getting a little bumpier. I just had to get it to where it was straight and would work with the fence on the table saw. I then cut the pieces at an angle again. What was funny is that because I was cutting these at an angle, my overall piece was getting shorter and wider. <laughs> as the strips were getting longer because they're cut at an angle through the bigger strip. And I can kind of reshuffle all the pieces together. And then I glued all the pieces together. On these, I would, I do a section, clamp that, and then work on the next section, then clamp the new section to the old section. So I sort of always had pressure on the glue joints whether they were at the beginning or at the end. Then I could joint the edge again. So at this point, I cut my piece into two strips, and I can start to cut those strips into the triangles that I need for the sphere. And I can use the same 30-degree fence that I attached to my sled and I can cut the strips into triangles. It's a lot like cutting segments for rings for a bowl, where I'll make one cut and then flip the piece over and make the other cut and flip the piece over and make another cut. So there isn't very much waste in making the triangles. I decided that the triangles were a little too thick and I really should have made the whole thing thinner. So I cut the triangles down on the bandsaw. Then I sanded 
one of the sides so it would sit flat in the jig that cuts the angle on the sides of the triangles. So I've done this in previous videos and I'll, I'll link to something where I go through this a little bit more. Basically I cut the same angle on all three sides of the triangle. And with this 20 sided shape, all of the triangles fit together. And they're all the same triangle with the same angle. So it makes it very straightforward to make. I'm getting better at the glue up. I do it now where I have a five triangle pentagon at the top and bottom and a ring around the middle. If I tape everything together, sort of in that order, I can put glue in all the joints, put the ring together, put one of the ends on and then put the other end on. And that works pretty well to get all the joints tight. It really helps to have a nice flat work surface to push the triangles into as they're going together. The next step is to add some blocking so I can hold the object on the lathe. Now I wanted to find the center on each side of this object. And I actually went and I made a little quick little model of the 20 sided object to really see if the triangles on each side that I thought were centered to each other actually were. And they actually look like they are. As with the computer model, you can see through to the other side and you can see that the triangles line up with each other. So what I wanted to try on this sphere was to rough cut the sphere into the shape on the CNC fourth axis before I brought the shape over to the lathe and did the actual hand wood turning. <laughs> so what I needed to do was to have a center on each side so I could mount the shape on the CNC machine and have the, the sphere fall in the right place. So I glued a triangle to one side and that'll be where the tailstock attaches. I can find the center of that triangle and drill a hole there. Then on the other side, I have a square block and a triangular block glued together and they're glued together so their centers line up. That way when I put the triangle on the triangle that's on the sphere in place, I'll have a center on the square blocks in the right location. And this will allow me to add my metal connection plate that fits in with the jaws on the CNC machine. So the, this complicated glue up is all to, to make sure that the center is in the right place. Oh. And that when I cut the sphere into the 20 sided object, the, the sphere is centered in that object. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the closer it is to the actual center, the less material I have to remove. I started with some roughing passes just to start removing the corners on the shape. This was going somewhat slow because I really didn't want to screw up my piece that I had made so far, <laughs> but it seemed to go just fine. I did two roughing passes, I think, and then I did a finishing pass, which went in the other direction. And in doing it in that direction, I can get the sphere to be pretty close to a sphere. <laughs> this is sped up a whole bunch. This is the speed it was actually going. So this took a good part of a day to cut this on the CNC machine. And at this point, I was thinking in the future, I, I probably wouldn't do it this way because it, it just seemed like it took forever. I took my plate off and I can cut the two ends off. So now I have a sphere that will fit in my cups on the lathe. And what I discovered really quickly was that it was centered and fell into place right away. To get to this point on the lathe usually takes me a good bit of a day. 
if I'm doing the process that I did on the CNC machine by hand. So I think actually it is much, much easier to do a rough sphere on the CNC machine than just finish up the surface on the lathe. I can take the two ends off and make that part of the sphere flush with the rest of the shape. And then it's just a matter of getting the surface nice. You can see that I really don't change the size much. And I got it pretty smooth just with the bowl gouge. So getting that foundation of a sphere on the CNC machine really did seem to help. Then I could sand, and the sanding went pretty quickly. So usually one of these spheres takes a day to a day and a half, and doing it, doing it this way, the time on the lathe was really only about an hour of turning and then about half an hour of sanding. And I got it nicely polished up, and it looked really good. For being just a prototype out of leftover pine, it turned out pretty nice. <laughs> it makes me want to do one out of nice hardwood now. <laughs> Added some walnut oil, and it's all end grain, so it, it soaked in pretty nicely. So the pattern and the triangles work somewhat together. I think it's better than if I had done 90 degree cuts and made lots of little rectangles. But I think it could still be a little bit better but I'm not sure how to wrap my head around how to do the cuts through the strip and how to make the angles to make the pattern work out as 60 degree angles to then work perfectly with the triangles. I'm sure I'll be doing more of these. <laughs> Thanks for watching.